And it's the issue of self-attribution. Just as we make attributions about the motives of other people, we make attributions about ourselves also. And to the extent, and most of us do it most of the time, to the extent that we say, I am this kind of person. I am an aggressive person. So whenever a problem comes up, if my boss does something that I don't like, I will confront him directly and tell him how stupid he is. That's the kind of person I am. Or I am a shy person. Why don't I approach the professors and ask a question if I have one in mind? Well, I am a shy person, and shy people do not approach professors. Why do I keep sitting in the back of the room when perhaps I can hear better or see better if I'm in the front of the room? Well, I'm a shy person, and I like to be able to escape quickly through the back door if I need to. When we make inflexible personality self-attributions, when we say, this is the kind of person I am, it's like putting a nail in our own coffin. This kind of inflexible self-attribution mitigates against growth, change, and trying new things. We can change the dispositional attribution, I am a shy person, into a situational attribution by asking a few simple questions. For example, if I say I am a shy person, what does that mean? Well, it means if I go to a party and I see across the room a famous actress who is very beautiful, uh, who is very intelligent, who is very uh, exciting, and she is surrounded by a whole bunch of guys who are young and dynamic and also beautiful, and I'm standing there outside the party sort of drinking my vodka, looking over there with great um, longing and envy, and I say to myself, and I'm having a lousy time at the party, and I say to myself, I might as well go home. This is a stupid party. But then I say to myself, where would you most like to be at this party? Who would you most like to be talking to? I say, well, that beautiful, attractive, intelligent actress over there. And then I say to myself, well, how come you're standing over there if where you want to be is over there? What's the answer? If the answer is because I'm a shy person, that's slamming the door when I, on, on any kind of change or growth. If I attribute my lack of activity to something that's deeply in my personality, I will never change. How come I'm not talking to her? Because I'm a shy person. That closes the door to change. But suppose I say, how come I'm not talking to her? Well, I'm afraid. What are you afraid of? Put yourself in my shoes. What are you afraid of? Rejection, maybe, huh? I'm afraid if I go over to her, straighten my tie, and say, <laughs> Hello, my name is Elliot Aronson. She simply might look at me like this and say, Oh, really? <laughs> and start talking to, the, to these hotshot guys that are all around her, right? And that would be very painful. Then I ask myself the next question. What is the probability that she will do that? Low. It's low, not because I'm so terrific, but because she's probably at least a polite person. She's not going to turn around. She'll at least be a little bit friendly. 
And the next question is, even if she did reject me in a very cold way, what are the terrible consequences of that? What would I lose that I already have? I'm already having a lousy time at this party. I'm about to leave the party and go back to my hotel room where I'm going to be watching television for the rest of the night in Polish. <laughs> so, one way of looking at it is that I might as well take the risk because there's nothing to lose. The important thing is not exactly what I do or how I figure it out. The important thing is that by making a situational attribution, and here is the situational attribution. Instead of saying, I am a shy person, which is a dispositional self-attribution, if I say, I am a little bit afraid of rejection, and um, I'm not always afraid of rejection, because if I am on my home turf, if I am in my own town, surrounded by my own friends and my own colleagues, I can be extremely assertive. But when I'm in a strange country where I don't know anybody, and I don't know the language very well, and I don't know exactly how much a zlati is worth, um, I'm feeling a little bit insecure, and under those situations, I can behave in a very um, unassertive way. My tendency is to behave in an unassertive way. And once I recognize that as situational, I can do something to change it by asking myself the, the kind of questions that I just asked. So this is what Grajina means by malleability, that if we look at these things as situational issues rather than as dispositional issues, dispositional here is a synonym for personality. Personality suggests something that can't be changed, or at least can't be changed very easily, short of deep psychotherapy. If I look at it in, dis in situational terms, I'm looking at it as a set of skills to be learned. A set of skills to be learned. So, for example, the skill is how can I approach this woman even though I'm afraid of rejection? That's a skill. That's taking a risk of being rejected and realizing that I don't have a lot to lose anyway. That's a skill. Just like whether you behave in a point way or in an interval way is a strategy, not a disposition. That in certain situations, choosing to behave in a point way, choosing to approach the problem like a point strategist is going to be very effective. In other situations, choosing to approach the problem as an interval strategist is going to be more effective. In some situations, if you're angry at your boss because he has done something that you don't like, confronting him directly might be very effective. In other situations, it might cost you your job. And it's up to, a, to each individual to make an assessment of the situation and then decide what kind of strategy will be most effective in that situation. And that is how we learn and grow, even through failure. If we fail in a given situation, if we use the wrong strategy and it doesn't work, okay, we failed in that situation, but we can then look at it and say, okay, what can I learn from that failure? It's in that context and you see how we're coming full circle in this course. It's in that context that self-justification can be a really dangerous strategy because self-justification following a failure 
acts in the direction of convincing ourselves that we actually did the right thing in the past. We justify the past behavior. Whereas if we look at the failure and, a and ask ourselves, what can I learn from that failure so that I won't commit the same failure again next time that situation arises, that requires a certain amount of courage, the courage to admit that we made a terrible mistake, the courage to face up to all the dissonance that comes up when we say we have made a mistake, and that's the only way that we can grow and change and improve. Any questions about any of that?